Dan Perry here again, and this is our TCP IP basic series, uh, part 22, the OSI model, and in this video we're going to be looking at the transport model, and this is just going to be the first in several tutorials on the transport model, um, or transport layer I should say, not model. The transport layer provides our data communications between two nodes, nodes endpoints, computers, two devices. Uh, there are two primary protocols that are used at the transport layer, TCP, or Transport Control Protocol, and UDP, User Datagram Protocol. Both are used extensively with TCP being the most common of the two protocols. Now, looking at our OSI model from the top, up to this point, we've been dealing with data as a whole. So if the file was 5 megabytes in size, we've been dealing with the entire 5 megabyte chunk. The transport layer takes that large file, or large data chunk, and breaks it into smaller groupings called segments. Each of these segments will then be transmitted to the endpoint and at the other end reassembled. Um, the, each of these segments are encapsulated or placed, think of that encapsulation as placing those segments inside of an envelope. That envelope has a header at the beginning of each segment. That header will have information that we'll look at in future videos to help get the uh, segment back reassembled at the other end and to the proper application. TCP is a reliable connection-oriented communications protocol. Reliable meaning we can tell once the communication session has started if any data is lost or missing. It has error checking to ensure the data is received reliably. And if anything is missing, it can retransmit. Uh, it's got flow control so it can control how quickly or how fast data is transmitted. Congestion control, so if there is congestion either on the network or at the receiving end, it, you can control and slow down your communications. Sequencing of those segments, remember we said all of the, the big data, the big chunk of data was broken into smaller segments. Those segments have a sequence number applied, so at the other end, if they are received in a different order, they can re be reassembled, and we also know if any sequences are, or any segments are lost. Um, used by a lot of applications, some of the ones you use quite often include HTTP, FTP, and Telnet. UDP is a simpler protocol. It's connectionless meaning that it doesn't rely on two-way communications for it. It's very fast, but it's best effort delivery. You send the data out and you hope that at the other end it's received. Uh, UDP is very good for things like streaming media so that if I lose an occasional packet, I'm not going to be in big trouble, uh, but I need to make sure that transmission is very fast. Now, your transport layer, you had that big chunk of data, and it comes down from the application presentation sayers, uh, session layers, and then it is broken into, again, those segments, and each of those segments, a header is applied to the beginning of. The header, as I said, beginning of each segment, uh, it will differ depending on whether it's a TCP or a UDP protocol that's being used. Uh, the headers will include uh, two ports. Those ports are the source and destination ports, and these are numbers, and the port numbers determine what application is being used to send the data, and also what application is expected to receive the data at the other end. And we'll talk more about ports in a later video. Next time we're going to continue looking at our TCP headers and get into some of the details that are in those headers.